Hi everyone, it's Tara. Welcome back to my channel and to another Five on Friday video. Today's Five on Friday features my lovely husband, John. That's me. That's him. I'm the feature. <laughs> so today's Five on Friday is five books that John thinks I should read. No. Oh, okay. What's today's Five on Friday, dear? Five books that I think you would like. Okay. Five books that he thinks I would like. Which I guess is the same as thinking she should read them, but at any rate. Whatever. It's whatever you, one of those variations. You could see the title. Yeah. And that's, that's what she what went with. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to kind of just let John take it away. All right. So in order to come up with this list, I sort of used your uh, five bookish buzz wor buzzwords video. Okay. If you haven't watched that one, you should watch that because it would help you with things I like. With things that my wife I'll likes. I'll link it down below. You would think I would know what my wife likes. Without watching a video. <laughs> Without watching a video. But I use that and I mean also the knowledge of particular. that's another thing. This is like particularly fantasy books mm -hmm. that I think she would like. Not just books I think she would like, but fantasy books I think she would like. Books that he has read and he reads almost exclusively fantasy. Yeah. So, using that list, plus the books that are fantasy that I know you've read and liked, a la Harry Potter, Name of the Wind, I have come up with some other books that I think she should read. Okay. But we're going to start with a couple of bonus ones. Okay. Ones that make uh, make too much sense to actually have on this list. All right. So, what are the, the two bonus ones? That's three. Oh. Three what bonus ones. What are the three ones. bonus ones? So, the first is uh, A Time of Dread. Now, why is this a bonus one? This is a bonus one because it's by John Gwynn, and it's a sort of continuation of a series that she's already read three out of four books in. Which um, is Faithful and the Fallen. Faithful and the Fallen. So which that was... I will probably read the last book next yes. month. So. so, this is a bonus because she already likes the author's writing style enough to read mm -hmm. three rather long books by him, and this involves, like, kids or kids, grandkids, great-grandkids of some of the characters in the original series. And it's a good book. Uh, second bonus is Darker Shade of Magic. Why is this a bonus? Because I pulled this off of Tara's shelf to read. So at some point she bought this for herself to read. So that must mean she liked something about the sound of it. Now, I guess I'll add in that this is like a basically dual perspective uh, dominant because there are a couple little what I'll call interludes, mm -hmm. where it takes you into the eyes of other characters. Um, but it's good. There's like a, a really good, strong female character that I liked. And the, I don't know, how do you, how do you like strong female characters, Sarah? If they're not, um, bitchy. I don't know. Not, what okay, not overly bitchy. Like I, a little bit of like sass can, and bitchiness is fine. Can you like, define bitchy? Like... I wouldn't want to be friends with her in real life. Okay. That didn't help. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Well, anyway. <laughs> this is a good book. It's, uh, sort of has, like, a realism element because one of the alternate Londons in here is basically, like, London in our world. All right. Anyway. And then the third one would be, uh, Lies of Locke Memora. I'll put a picture up. Yeah. I lent that out to a friend. Yeah. So, uh, that's a bonus because she has expressed interest in wanting mm -hmm. to read it before. Yeah. So, let's, let's right, start so the let's actual start list. The actual list. So, number, so the first book, I won't say number five because I don't think you have it. Uh, yeah, these are in, order. they're in no particular order and they're, you know, I probably will say if I think it is the most likely for you to like it or the least likely for you to like it. Mm -hmm. Just because. All right. So, the first one. The first one is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Now, this is a uh, single perspective, okay. which I think uh, is something that you appreciate less perspectives because it gets less confusing and there's which less I chance for them to that, screw up the perspectiving. I would say that except that The Faithful and the Fallen has a million perspectives. Yes, but <laughs> that literally titles each chapter yes. by the name of the character. So if you don't know why John's <laughs> probably like specifying that, one of the things that I did not like about spinning silver was there was multiple perspectives but there was no indication as to when those perspectives were changing so 
I don't mind. Okay, John. There was an indication when it when it changed. It just didn't specify straight away who, who it was. So you had to figure it out so as you read. So I don't necessarily hate multiple perspectives. I just want there to be a clear like. Yeah, and I'm I'm merely saying it as an approachability factor. Yeah. So you don't hear oh, there's four perspectives. But anyway, one perspective, and then the other thing that I think you would like specifically about this is that. I personally, especially in this first book, got really big, like, Quoth and Elodin vibes. Okay. Because there's a, like, school element from to it. From Name of the Wind. Yeah, from Name of the Wind. Because there's a school element to it, which I know you like schools. It's not it's necessarily my... a magical school. There is Well, it doesn't have to be a magical it, school. But there is a, a good chunk That's of That's one book of my bookish buzzwords, place, schools. Yeah, that takes so. place in a, a school environment. So, um, and then the quote and elegant element of that like kind of master student relationship Got it. Uh, was, is something that I thoroughly enjoyed. Now this book does uh, border on grimdark. You know, are you familiar with the term grimdark? No. No. Uh, so basically grimdark is a genre of typically fancy, but I guess it could extend to sci-fi too, probably where things tend to be uh, very, um, brutally described. A big theme in this book is what happens when people are treated as less than human or seen as less than human, which I think is is a, a very good theme, and it continues in slightly different ways into the second book, too. Uh, second book we'll do is Brandon Sanderson's Warbreaker. Uh, this is a... I think there's three perspectives in this. Okay. Um, and it's... A standalone, mm -hmm. which I, I know that is a bonus for you because you're always uh, lamenting how many series you have going and start a starting a new series is like, oh god. I... It doesn't stop me from starting yeah, new series. Yes, it doesn't start, but... But, but it is a, a slight hurdle. Again, the approachability mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this follows mostly the uh, sisters Siri and Vivenia? Vivenia? Vivina? However you want to say it. However you want to say it. And uh, basically there was a war 20-something years ago that uh, those sisters, their father, lost, basically. Mm -hmm. And his line, who was the rightful rulers of this, uh, of Tetelier, were ousted by the, uh, by the, darn, what's their name? The, the, Hal the Halandrin? The Halandrin? And so they flee up into the hills. They start their own empire or, or kingdom up there. But as part of the peace treaty, they have to send a daughter to marry the God King in 20 something years. Okay. So this is at that time, the older sister of Avenia has been groomed to be sent there, mm -hmm. but then the father sends the younger daughter, Siri, in her place. And events transpire. So why do you think I'd like it? I think you'd like it because A, Brandon Sanderson has a very good uh, writing style, and and I've read I've read Mistborn, yeah, the Mistborn trilogy, Born. and a long time ago. It's it's actually like very approachable because it's a standalone. There's not huge amounts of like plot, but yeah. at the same time, there's like a really strong plot. The magic system is is very easily understandable. All right. So that's that one. Next one is Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. And this is a fantasy, obviously, uh, but it takes place mostly in hell mm -hmm. and on Earth, so and so a little bit in heaven. So it's kind of, you know, an approachable world in that way, in that it mirrors, you know, the religious views of our world, as it were. Now, it does have some other uh, afterlife type uh, settings, but all ones that you would be familiar with. So there's, I think, three, possibly four perspectives in here, with one of them being, like, the main dominant one that takes up most of the reading time, which is Claire, the librarian of Hell's Library, which is a place where any book in the process of being written, or that will ever be written, is housed. Okay. So, uh, the, it starts off with the hero of one of those books escaping, and going to find the author to get, basically to get her to write the book. Uh, yeah, so I personally thoroughly enjoyed this, and I think you would too. 
we're gonna do Gideon the Ninth. Now this list is a bit fluid it, as yeah. I read other things, you know, certain ones. Yeah. Like this is probably the first one I would take off if there was something else okay. that, that I came be. upon that I, uh, you know, liked better for for you. But why why would you like this one? Well, let's see. It is entirely through the eyes of one character, Gideon, we you see on the front here. Um, it's not exactly a fantasy. It's not exactly a science fiction. It has elements of a uh, little, very small amount of romance, very, mm -hmm. uh, but good elements of comedy and like slight elements of, I, don't, I wouldn't say horror per se, it more borders on like the mystery thriller and not so Just much on the horror. Right. Like I wasn't scared Damn. at any point reading this. I think the comedy balances out the the horror aspect. Okay. The and you know it's it's fantasy, but there's automatic doors and spaceships. Anyway, why do I think you would like it? There's a bit of a magical school type element. Okay. Um, it's not exactly a school, and there's a murder and. So is there like a mystery element? Yes, there's okay. definitely a mystery element. So that's something that I really yes, like. There's definitely a mystery element. Can I just say that this kind of reminds me of a clown face? Oh, which... uh, yeah, the paint. Now, granted, now makeup. obviously that's just the cover. I hate clowns. Like, ugh, can't stand them. Yeah. So I would have to take the, uh, the dust, dust jacket, jacket off, off, which is probably for the best anyway. Okay, the okay. last one. Last book here is the Demon King. Now, at some point. This was on your TBR. This was on my TBR. Yes. So it was, I think, the video where, like, you picked my TBR. Yeah, and that, so that was way too much all at once. This yes. is, here's some books that you might like if you ever need a But this should be in my, like, like. In your jar? In my jar. Oh, because yeah. it was a book that was on my TBR and it's a book that, like, we own. Yep. So at some point I will probably read it, but. So this is a, uh dual perspective book. I'm pretty sure it's only the two. The two main characters, Han and Reisa, um, one being a a former street mm -hmm. street lord, if you will, a crime uh, crime syndicate runner who has since given up that life, and the other one being the uh, princess and heir to the throne in, uh, in the Fells, which is where this takes place. Um, I personally bought this because the cover was really cool. Um, the magic system is very simple. With the, the people who are born as wizards, they need to wear an amulet that they can store their power in and then hold the amulet when they want to, like, cast spells. Mm -hmm. So, very simple. Now, this also has a magical school element. There's a school at this place called Odin's Ford where all wizards go to mm -hmm. train. And actually, it's also half military. So, the entire, like, any military from any of the different countries will go there to, to learn as well. If you were to read these, the first series, then this, that opens up to you the second series, which is a little bit, uh, a little mm. bit more mature. And so, which one of those do of, you think I would like the most? Of all of them? Out of the five. Oh yeah, out of the five, the, the ones that are actually on the list that I think you would like the most, or like that I would be most likely to. That's a tough pick question. Up. Cause I can tell you which one to me. Probably well, yeah. Sounds... I, I mean, I'd be interested to see what you think, and then I can I can either uh, kind of like knee jerk agree yeah. or disagree with that. I the one that sounds the most intriguing to me, based off of what you said, is the Library of the Unwritten. I mean, I have to admit that I think the the subject matter of it being based around a library and uh, the librarian being the main yeah. thing is probably yeah. I I think. I think you would, yeah, you would enjoy any of these. I heard a lot about the Poppy Wars, both from you and from BookTube. It is like a fairly popular series on BookTube. Brandon Sanderson, like Warbreaker. I at some point will maybe read all of the books and like, ah, uh, do I want to say that? Knowing in how what, big Stormlight Archive. Yeah, well, I was gonna say in the Cosmere, but then knowing uh, that the Stormlight Arch Archive is. I did huge. specifically put uh, Stormlight Archive on. The, the second list. Stay tuned for the second yeah, list. Yeah, that'll uh, be part in two. In a future video. All of them have, like, aspects of, like, I think I would like, yeah. but, or, like, I would gravitate towards, but if I, like... While also being approachable. Yeah. But the one that I am the most interested in as of, like, right now would be the Library of the Unwritten. That is it. That is the five books 
plus three bonus books that <laughs> John thinks I should, that I would like, or that he has read, that he would recommend to me, the, something. The ones off my shelf that she would be most likely to like, in my humble opinion, as her husband. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't count for much. <laughs> if you have read any of these, any of the five, because the, the three bonus ones I'm probably going to read anyways, yeah. um, let me know down below. That is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.